Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of Tartan Tuesdays. I've been really busy with work at the minute, seeing as it's leading up to Christmas, which is why I've not been doing one every week. But don't worry, we've got a good one today. Today we're doing Death Note. Now this is the one and two packs, four discs, really awesome, awesome pack. I know you can get this leather bound as well. I tried to get it a few years ago, but they'd sold out when I went back and I had the money and I was really gutted. So if you can get your hands on the leather bound one, I think it's just as good as this. Um, yeah, so Death Note is a live action movie that came out in 2006 and it's based off of a manga of the same name. This also has Death Note 2, the last name. I'll probably be doing that in a later episode of Tartan Tuesdays because they follow on immediately from when the first one ends. Now, I'm not going to try and butcher any of these people's names, but um, the lead character in this, who plays Light Yagami, is the same guy who plays Nanahara Shuya in Battle Royale. I think he is super awesome and super cute. Yeah, so you're not going to get a good, a good actor in this, at least. Um, I also have a huge crush on the guy that plays L. Any girls out there agree with me on that one? Because L's hot. <laughs> I don't care who says not, he is. Yeah, so Death Note basically um, starts off with uh, the, the antagonist, Kira, already in full swing. We have a sort of mini prequel a few minutes into the movie to show us how he came about. Now... The city of uh, Tokyo has been um, sort of hit with this, um, they don't quite know what it is, but Kira is an entity to them really, because they don't know if he's a man, if he's a woman, they don't know what he is, where he is, where he came from, anything like that. All they know is that these criminals, people in prison, people out of prison who are wanted criminals, are dying. They're dying of heart attacks, which makes it even stranger because how... How do these people just have heart attacks for no reason? How are they getting killed for no reason? Um, so it happens a couple of times and they dismiss it as just a random coincidence. It's good, great, we wanted them, they're, they're murderers, rapists, whatever, and they're dead. They start to notice the pattern happening and then Kira starts to announce himself online and we have this Kira community, these Kira supporters. There's loads of Japanese uh, teenagers, um, adults, kids, all these people who are for Kira and against Kira. Some of them say that he's a murderer, that he should be killed himself, he's just killing random people. Even though these people are hardened criminals, you can't just go around doing that. And then there's a huge community of people that love him. They are total super Kira supporters. They love the fact that he's killing these criminals and taking the scum off the streets. Um, if this was real, personally, I'd be a Kira supporter. <laughs> because Come on, really? So yeah, so we open, um, it's very, very early on in the movie, I'd say even a couple of minutes, that we find out that Light Yagami is Kira. Now, nobody else in the entire film knows who he is. We know this, but nobody else does. It's a huge secret. Obviously, he has to keep himself under wraps. Um, and that is pretty much what both the movies are, are about, you know, is that he's evading capture. He... Uh, as the movies, as both of them, because it is a follow on, but I'll, I will do Death Note 2 eventually. But in Death Note 1, uh, we basically just follow Light Yagami getting worse as Kira. He, he starts off as a very um, sort of innocent boy. He, you know, he's a law student, he's got a girlfriend who's also a law student, and his dad is the chief of police, and he wants to see justice done. He hacks into his dad's. I think he's got like his dad's account, he acts into the police files and he sees that a lot of these hardened criminals that have been convicted have got very, very short sentences, have not really been, you know, crucified to the extent of the law. Which is why when he gets in possession of the death note at the beginning of the movie, he takes it into his own hands. Now, he, gets, he comes into possession of the death note because one of the uh, death gods, or god of death, his one, Ryuk, who is freaky 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 in the movie uh drops it in his path once he picks it up he's able to see ryuk and then he's also able to talk to him nobody else can see him you can only see the um gods of death if you touch the death note um he then finds out what the death note does and basically if you write someone's name in it uh if you don't specify um a way of dying in the next 40 seconds after you've written the name then they're just gonna die of a heart attack you also have to picture the person, you have to be able to picture them in your mind because obviously if you write down someone's name and there's just a million other people with that name, it's, it needs they, they need to know who it is. I don't really know how that works. You just picture it in your mind, it's a bit weird. 
But yeah, so we see him kind of killing a few criminals out on the street, and then it gets to the point where he starts killing a lot of kill uh, criminals in prisons, on the street, all over the world. He watches a lot of news reports, he gets it like that. Now, we eventually get to the point in the movie where they start suspecting people. I'm not going to give any real plot twists away, but um, there is a sequel, so you kind of know that he doesn't die in this one. The halfway through the movie, we get introduced to L. L is an awesome character. He's basically a teenage boy. He's an orphan. Um, he's highly intelligent. He has like I guess his parents maybe were rich. He has a lot of money clearly because he has like a really high tech technology. Really intelligent, like I said. Now he takes it upon himself to try and figure out who Kira is. So he works with the police force, and obviously likes Dad to try and figure out um, ways of narrowing down who it could be. And over the course of the movie, we um, see him narrowing down the fact that he's in Japan, the fact that he's going to be a male, the fact that he's um, probably going to be a teenager, all this kind of awesome stuff. So we get to see Light start getting worse and worse and um he st he kind of starts getting really corrupted by the death note we see l getting closer and closer we see his dad start getting a little bit suspicious and that's pretty much the entirety of death note one um it's got a really good ending a really good relationship between all the characters second one is awesome i will be doing that and yeah i mean i can't really say any more because obviously i don't want to give away like a lot of specifics you know I mean I think I've said enough already but yeah so that's Death Note 1 and you should really check it out and you should check out the second one too because obviously it concludes everything that happens in the first one but yeah I'm gonna end it there I think I've said enough I think it'll give me enough to think about <laughs> okay so join me next time for episode 7 which will more than likely be Death Note 2 I'd like to do a follow-up but I don't know for sure yet so I'll see you soon bye